Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at automation curves in GarageBand. So, automation curves are a way to control an aspect of a track in GarageBand over time. So, for instance, here I have a regular audio track. I click on this button here to show the uh, the automation curve. Now, it's just a straight line here, and this is for volume. The volume is going to remain consistent over time. But I can change that by simply clicking in the automation curve at any point and adding another dot. Now I can take that dot and then drag it down for lower volume or up for more volume. And you can see how it will increase from one dot to the next, from one keyframe to the next, uh, gradually. So if I wanted to have several dots I can do all sorts of things like for instance I can create three dots here and take this middle dot and drag it down like that. If I wanted to have something change abruptly the way to do it would be to simply drag this over here like that just to the point just before it makes the other dot disappear and you can see the volume would drop quickly there and gradually increase over time to this point. So I can play around with these dots as much as I want to actually have things. So the, the this volume will remain consistent, suddenly drop down, and then raise up. So I could use this to create things like fade in and fade outs. Uh, you can select any dot. You can see how when you select one like that, just click on it, it will highlight, and then you could delete it like that. By default, you have one dot there at the very left, and you could drag that up or down to change everything and drag it right back to the middle. So if I wanted to have, say, a fade in, I could say, put a dot there, take this first dot and have it be there so now it would fade in over time and similarly I could add a fade out somewhere else. Now you can have automation curves for other things. So in addition to track volume I can go over to the pan and actually have it pan between left and right speakers. So at zero it's equal between both speakers. So I could have it pan over to the left, pan over to the right and now it will start in the center and all the way over to the left and all the way over to the right and remain on the right for this particular track here. I could also very easily just grab the entire thing and say I want to have this entire track pay, play in the left speaker so I can drag this up and it will all play on the left and I can another track play on the right. Now you can create automation tracks for other things as well. You can add it here and you can see you can do equalizers and you can do echo and reverb so I can have, say, the echo change over time, go from nothing to 100 and then down, back down to zero here and that will change while the track is playing. That's why it's called an automation curve because it kind of automates the changing of the echoes. Instead of being set to a specific amount it automatically goes up and then automatically goes down as the track plays. Now that's what you could do with an individual track but for the master track you can do a lot more. So let's go to Show Master Track. So this gives me at the bottom here the master volume that can, is for all tracks. So say if I wanted to have the entire song fade out at some point, I could add a point there, a point here, drag this point down, and there I get a fade out for the entire thing. Now, when you have a MIDI track, a track that's made up of notes rather than recorded sound, there are other things that you could add as well. So when I add automation for one of these types of tracks you can see I have a lot of different things that I could do to change the track over time. In addition, in the master track when I have one of these note based tracks I can add master pitch and even master tempo changes. So master pitch will allow me to raise the pitch up and you can see it actually doesn't do a gradual one there. It does a quick one. So I can do something like this where the pitch will go up and then down and when I play it back even though this is the same loop you can see it's going to change as you listen to it. Now you can also change the master tempo which is kind of interesting. So here I have just a steady bass beat here but I could have it speed up and then slow back down over time. So that definitely could be very handy especially at the end of some songs when you want it to actually slow down and fade out. 
Now the skill of being able to use automation curves is not only for GarageBand. You can also use it in lots of other programs. It's available in some parts of iMovie when you're manipulating audio. And it's also available in things like Final Cut Pro and other applications. So I hope you found this useful. Until next time this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.